cheese. Boom. There we go. Hey guys, I'm Summer Tech Chap, and let's talk about nothing. Okay, that's the only time I'm gonna mention that joke. This is the Nothing Phone 1, and there's been a ton of hype around this. Firstly, because, well, it's their first phone. They only were established like two and a half years ago. We had the earbuds, the Nothing earbuds last year, which did pretty well. I think they sold over half a million units. And here we are with their first phone. So, is it any good? Well, this is just a first impressions, bit of a hands-on. There was a separate embargo for reviews. And actually, I do want to spend a bit more time with this before I give you my final judgment. But I can show you around and give you some of my first thoughts. And first of all, there are two things you need to know. Number one, I actually have COVID right now. I'm not sure if you can tell by my sweaty forehead and my horsey voice. Here is the double line test to prove it. Uh, I'm feeling pretty rough, but I wanted to get this video up and share with you my first impressions. So if you haven't subscribed yet, I will happily take a pity subscribe. Uh, but the second thing you need to know is I'm having a great time with this. It's one of the most unique and just kind of fun phones I've used in a long time. The first thing I want to show you though is this. This is the box, which you can see is already open. This is a terrible unboxing video. Uh, but actually, if you haven't uh, followed me on TikTok or Instagram, I did a bit of an unboxing. Ah, that's the, that's the cover kicking in. I did a bit of an unboxing short there. So go and follow me over there. But as you can see, there is no room for a charger in here. We get the phone, a USB-C cable, a ejector tool, and some paperwork. That is it. I do also have a couple of cases here, but they came separately uh, from I was gonna say OnePlus there, that's dangerous. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, but as you can see, this is a clear plastic one, so you can still see this. Got it, but first you'll have to- Excuse me, we can still see this glyph interface on the back. And also this nifty bumper case, which that, and also just the design itself really kind of reminded me of the iPhone 4. We've got this aluminum frame around the edge, curved, and of course that had the bumper case as well, which was there to uh, fix antenna gate. No such problems here. We've got Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and back. It does feel, a little plasticky, uh, but we've got this nice smooth aluminium frame on the back. It comes in two colors, white or black. All those uh, sort of pre-release hype photos and early access videos always showed the white, which initially I was a little bit disappointed that I was given the black, but I think it kind of makes those glyph lights stand out even more. So let's talk about that, the glyph interface. So if I open the camera app, I can actually go to video and rather than having a flash, I can turn on the glyph fill light. So this is one of the use cases. It really is only useful quite close up. So if you're taking pictures of your food or your dog or something up close, and it will do everything from, as I say, give you a fill light for your photos and videos, but it also flashes with your ringtones, notification sounds, if you pop it in for charging, and there's just quite a unique design to it. Uh, people say that this over here looks a little bit like a Wall E character. Wall E, Wall E, I should say. Uh, some of the people can see elephants in it. This looks like an exclamation mark. Definitely a sort of cyberpunky, futuristic vibe going on here. So the challenge for any phone company is how do you stand out? And I think while nothing has wild aspirations, there's only so much they can do in the sort of two years they've existed and they've only been fully working on this for like 18 months. So it is still a glass rectangle with fairly average specs. This is a affordable slash budget phone. We're talking 400 pounds, which puts this against the likes of the Pixel 6a and the Samsung Galaxy A53. We'll come back to that in a second. So what makes it stand out? Well. Three things, I think. Firstly, it is relatively affordable. Secondly, I love the design of this. It's comfortable, it's unique. I think the glyph interface is really cool. And I think thirdly, we've also got their ecosystem. Now this runs Android 12 with their Nothing OS on top, but it's very lightweight. There's no bloatware, there's no pre-installed apps outside of uh, the Google stuff. And also it's an open ecosystem. So eventually it's in beta right now, but they're telling me that you'll be able to control your Tesla from these sort of big short, cut setting menus at the top here. So it's very close to stock Android, just with their own little sort of skin on top, which I like. It's extremely lightweight and it means it's fast as well. And they say this with the earbuds and their software really is just the start of the ecosystem they're creating. So I can't wait to see what else is gonna be coming. But I have to say one thing that did kind of strike me when I first started using this was how much it reminded me of a OnePlus phone, like the good original OnePlus phones. Good value for money, lovely software, really exciting brand. 
Now, OnePlus obviously still exists, and the co-founder of OnePlus, Carl Pei, is one of the founding members, is like the key founding member of Nothing. So there's certainly crossover there, and perhaps that's where the magic went from OnePlus. Maybe it's gone over to Nothing. We'll have to see. This isn't a full review, and there's gonna be questions over long-term support, just how good these cameras are versus some of the competition, and what do they do next? Do they stick with affordable phones? Do they give us a flagship? Lots of questions, but it's all very exciting. Okay, enough waffling, let's talk about some specs. And up front we have this good size 6.55 inch 120Hz HDR10 Plus OLED display. It's not using an LTPO panel, but it will smartly switch between 60 and 120Hz based on what you're doing. Inside we have the slightly aging, although they'll call it reliable, Snapdragon 778G Plus. And actually nothing tell me they've worked with Qualcomm, so this is a custom version, which now allows for wireless charging and wireless reverse charging, which is very nice to see. So the 778G Plus, and that's alongside either eight or 12 gigs of RAM, and either 128 or 256 gigs of storage. And then powering everything, we have a 4,500 mAh battery and also support for 33 watt fast charging. Now we'll come back to these cameras in a second, but one thing that struck me is for an affordable phone, it's missing some of the features that I know people do want, like there is no micro SD expandability, there is no headphone jack. But then on the flip side, we have 120 Hz, which is not guaranteed at this price point, although more and more common these days. Also an excellent haptic vibrator motor. Uh, the feedback on this is really, really good. And actually together with the sound and the lighting effects, it feels properly good when it's all going off. We also get stereo speakers, which sound pretty good, really nice, thin and symmetrical bezels. And I think overall the build and the design make it look and feel more expensive than it is. Although it is lacking, as I say, some of those more common budget features. Now I know a lot of people were a bit disappointed to see the 778G Plus chip instead of say the new Snapdragon 7 Gen 1, but it all comes down to money. Nothing wanted to hit a certain price point with this. And for them, this good old reliable chip was the best option. And you know, fair enough. They know it doesn't overheat. There's solid performance. It will run everything you need and it should help give us some decent battery life. Although that's something I'll be testing properly in my full review. Now, what's the one area of a phone that you can really tell the difference between a budget phone and a flagship? I think we can all agree it's probably the camera. That's where you can often see the biggest difference. We're getting a 50 megapixel main and a 50 megapixel ultra wide. And they're using the Sony IMX766 and the Samsung J1N sensors respectively. Which is nothing that exciting. The IMX766 is the same sensor used in, say, the OnePlus Nord 2. So definitely a mid-range kind of sensor. But here's a few shots I've taken with the Nothing phone over the last few days. Let me know what you think below. And as I say, we'll have a proper test of this in my upcoming full review. Tell you what, making a video with COVID is not fun. Uh, definitely give your screens a wash after this so you don't get it through the camera. <laughs> okay, a few final thoughts. I can't wait to see what the ecosystem and the software will become. Nothing have teased a few features that will be coming very soon that are in beta that I can't wait to try out. So in terms of software and support, I'm pretty excited to see what they can come up with. Secondly, I think it's a really good price, $399. Sadly, this won't be coming out in the US, or not yet at least. Although I know Nothing do have ambitions to launch in the US, but with carriers and networks, it's a little bit tricky. And thirdly, as unique as this looks, it's still a phone. It doesn't do anything drastically different than any other phone. There's a lot of hype and we have to be careful with hype. And I don't know also at this stage if it's gonna be a better bet uh, over the Galaxy A53 or the Pixel 6a. And while I haven't compared them yet, my money will be on the Pixel 6a to give you a much better camera experience. But so far, this is one of the most exciting new phones and new companies I've seen for a while. But what do you reckon? Have you placed a pre-order for this? Are you excited to get one or not really sure yet? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Jab and hopefully I'll be a lot less sweaty as well. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go and cry. That was hard.